Not really. <laughs> I didn't think anyone would get or be as. Yeah. It's one of those weird things where obviously the bush, people had grown to love the bush over 10 years, so it was going to be difficult. It was going to be quite a hard pill to swallow, you know, whatever I did next. But really, the thinking behind it was just me and Nigel had made the moon and done those animations, and what could we do with that? How could we extend that? Because me and Julian were definitely having a break, so we weren't going to carry on. Um, I like to keep working, keep busy. So really, it was sort of a thing that just kept expanding, and we kept getting more characters and then trying more techniques. And I don't know, we didn't. And the music, I'd met Serge at that point, so everything sort of came together at the right time. And I thought, oh, this will be good to try this. So I was trying to be really experimental. Also, I was sort of sick of narrative at that point. I'd written so many bush stories, and I'd, I was sort of trying to avoid anything I'd done in the bush, really. But that's impossible because all the people I love and work with are like Rich and my brother and stuff. So it was tricky, and Richard I Waddy was in it. It was weird because. I think there's some great things in it. I think there's some good characters in it, and I think it looks amazing. Nigel did an amazing job. I think the music was great. Serge is great. I just think it, it, it was kind of, you know, it was like a stepping stone, really. It was sort of, um, it was a little bit willfully obscure in places as well. But I think maybe the, yeah, the, extra, the reaction was really extreme. Like either people loved it or they hated it. Like there was nothing in between. But I, someone said to me, oh, who does like Noel Fielding other than 16-year-old girls and art students, and I just thought, that sounds like the perfect demographic to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, that is, that's brilliant, isn't it? You can't ask for better than that. <laughs> when I did it in Australia, I did my own show in Australia, people came dressed up as all the luxury characters. Like, no one came as bush characters. Everyone came as New York cop and fantasy man. Yeah, well. which was amazing. The turnaround killed me, actually, because I just thought, oh, they're all going to come as bush characters. But they didn't, they all came as luxury characters, like they just moved on. What was funny is that the audience were exactly the same age as they were when I was, I'd got older, but they'd stayed a sort of similar age. Am I just that? I'm just the phase people go through. <laughs> it's always the same sort of people, like sort of students and a bit older maybe and a bit younger. <laughs> so you become like a kind of a, an art building veteran <laughs> when, you, when you get And to I'm trade. getting older and they're not. <laughs> it's like a science it's fiction really great, film. So it's mainly like New York Cops in it, Fancy Man's in it, Roy Circles is in it. The ones that work best, they're all back, they've managed to be back in it because we're in a coffee shop, so Roy Circles in the coffee shop. New York Cops, the policeman on the island. Um, there's a plasticine part of the island, so Joe Ramone's in it quite a lot. And Fancy Man's in reality, but he sometimes comes into our painted world. Um, but I'm Dondi Lion, wow. <laughs> It's difficult because obviously I really w I love Dolly. I love working with Dolly because she's brilliant verbally and sort of as an actress she's great. And Tom does a real good physical thing that I love. Um, and he's got a similar sensibility to me and as much got quite a weird sense of humour. And he's an art student and he's got a similar vibe really. And Mike, I love working with Mike. That sort of means I get to hang out with him as well. Mike's actually character turn has really developed and he's, he's got all the funny lines. <laughs> And he's in a really good place at the moment, so he's nailing it. He's just coming in and nailing it in the reef freeze and then leaving like a hero. Um, so I'm a bit worried that I've made him too funny. <laughs> at one point I was thinking about putting Julian in it. That was a part that he could do. I'm hoping Richard I. Waddy's going to do some stuff in it. He said he would. Todd's in it quite a lot now, the, uh, the uh, hammerhead shark. They're sort of like a double act now. And then there's a few good parts for Richard. So I've tried to keep it more that it's the core team and then uh, Richard Iwadi is the, the next, you know, so it's Tom, Dolly, Mike, and then Richard Iwadi. Um, I think Arnab might be in it, hopefully. Um, Jerry might do a cameo. It's, it is the similar sort of team. It's tricky, really, because there are people I love, like Julia Davis, I'd love her to do something, but there was nothing quite... You sort of have to give those people, and Julian, you have to give them something really good because they're so good. You can't just offer them a little... And Rich, I really wanted to do some stuff for Richard, but he's gone to LA now. And also, it's weird because I didn't, because of the bush, I don't know if it's better or worse at reminding people that it isn't the bush by having people from the bush in it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and we've already done some songs. He's sort of busy doing his own album, but we've already made a couple of songs. And we'd like to do something with loose tapestries as well. And we might even have the first half of the album dedicated to the show, and then the second half just some, exper some stuff for us. And then maybe do some live gigs is the idea. Yeah. 
I found it really difficult. To, you can have things that recur and sort of, you can't have that. Yeah, and actually it always quite often came back. We tried to do that. I mean, like, say with Pele, where he, you know, he sort of, the picture broke. Roy had destroyed, the, the picture broke, and then he escaped, and then he kicked the ball, and then it was a sort of, uh, we tried to do it, but they're very minute, tiny things in sketches. They have to be so small. Whereas these, the stories that we're making at the moment are much bigger, they're massive stories, you know. In one episode we have to, I've not written an ending to the show, so we have to write an ending, but I can't because I've got fantasy block, which is a weird strain of writer's block, I can only write factual stuff, otherwise our only viewer is going to be killed by an asteroid, so it's quite a big story, you know. But I think it's great because you set these things going and then the humour's sort of second, or well, the humour's sort of there, but it's, it's not just about that, you're sort of watching something else, so you've got like a two-pronged attack, really. Um, and also, I love stories, goodies, baddies, you know, quests, those kind of things. Me and Gillian were always obsessed with those things. I don't know. Why did I do that? Why weren't you there when I was doing it? You could have said, don't do that, it's ridiculous. And then Dolly was telling me she was quite upset because she wanted this sort of glamorous girl and then... We slightly did it on purpose with Dolly. <laughs> we just sort of went... Because well, I love the name Dolly, I just thought, and when I think of Dolly, I love Dolly so much, and we've been friends for so long. When I think of Dolly, I just love the name, and I love her whole look, and her whole, she's so funny, she's got such funny bones, and she's such a brilliant, uh, something so brilliant about her, I don't know, I, I sort of thought, oh, we're not going to think of a better name, really, for her, it seemed to work, German Dolly, Dolly, and then, I don't know why I called myself Noel there, that was a bit of a stupid thing to do. The coffee shop will be quite normal in as much as it will look like a coffee shop in the interior. And then there'll be, it's sort of that, it's, I'll show you a thing of it, <laughs> roughly. I mean, this is just a drawing, but it's sort of, the coffee shop's perched on a volcano. So it's sort of like, there's a plasticine part of the island where Joe Ramone is and a New York part of the island. And there's a volcano and the coffee shop's on there. And there's a little rope bridge and you go to Todd and Tony in there. There's a cool clinic there. So that's roughly it. I love but the it will look. It's a normal coffee shop. It will look much. <laughs> but no one comes in, we've got one customer. <laughs> so it's sort of. It is still really fantastical. But I'm hoping it's more fantastical in a kind of Rudyard Kipling way and a much more charming sort of. I think stories are the key, really start of next year I suppose or the end of this year probably probably won't get it done by the end of this year it's crazy when you start thinking about it you go oh my god I've just spent five years of my life making this <laughs>